Welcome to the adventures of Emperor Au Contraire. I was going to call him Roy Au Contraire, but no, of course, that's, that's Kingdom Level Turtle, isn't it? So, what have we got to do? Well, quite honestly, die. That's basically it at this stage. We're training up Prince Au Contraire of the Holy Roman Empire here. I've let a couple of days tick, just while I've been sorting some things out, giving out titles, honorary titles, that type of thing. Our Polician Prodigy Son, who's fairly hit and miss, I'll be honest with you. Idolize a playful, uh, timid, not too great. He's getting an intrigue education because that's, it was either that or learning, and learning was statistically the better one of the two, but I think intrigue is a bit more useful when you're going to become a, a ruler of a realm that's going to be lots of different religions and lots of different cultures. You're going to be seen as a heretic. So keeping himself alive, I think, is, is uh, you know, sort of the top priority here. Now, speaking of which, we've used all of our powers with this character to basically empower the realm, right? Use Lucifer's own to possess the Pope on multiple occasions. Get the free claims from the Pope on multiple occasions. That's basically allowed us to tidy up all of this area here. We've basically got to launch... Oh my god, my vassals have grabbed a lot of the Nile Delta. You incredible man. Basically, we've got to launch the Mage War against uh, the Seljuks. Just... Oh my god, we only really need Anatolia. A couple of states here in the Levant, seeing as we've got almost all of Antioch now. And then just this area, and we're done. That That is the Roman Empire. But obviously, we want to play as this next character. We want to uh, reform the Polition faith and essentially set ourselves up as the head of the, relig the religion. The religion? Close enough. So why don't we also try and buff up our power as much as possible with this guy, seeing as we basically set the, the trend this entire campaign, or, or as this dude for, the, for, this, for his duration of the campaign, anyway. So, absolute crown authority. We've got six undecided, one supporter. We've got 9,000 gold, so favours shouldn't really be an issue. Um, now, it gets minus 15 with all rulers affected by this title for 10 years. So, the sooner we do it, the better. It enables King's Internal Peace, Complete King's Peace. So, uh, Internal King's Peace stops vassals fighting each other, but still allows wars outside of the realm. Complete King's Peace is no wars, essentially, for however long that lasted. Was it like five years? Um, Imperial Administration, which is huge, because that actually changes our government type to Imperial, which gives us some bonuses, especially when we're already dealing with Imperial Decadence. We might as well try and go for that. Does your kingdom claim CB? That's pretty massive. <laughs> That's actually pretty huge. Now, it's fairly irrelevant when you're the HRA. If we were the Byzantine Empire, we'd be able to go for, like, the Kingdom of Nicaea or something. But seeing as we're the, uh, I call it the HIP. Seeing as we're the HRE, we'd only be able to grab, you know, like, um, Franken, or Schwaben, or Bayeren, or... The other places you get, you get what I'm getting at. So, so that's not such a big deal, to be honest with you. Now, with that, we also get 60% bonuses to our. Oh, actually, what do we get from this one? 45. So we're getting a 15% bonus to all of our minimum levy size. We're getting domain size plus three, but we get minus 10. Uh, we get another minus six opinion on top of the minus 15. We get temporarily as well. So it's not a huge growth as long as we can outlive that initial minus 15, which, to be honest, we definitely can. Because if you look at our vassal opinion, yeah. I mean, the lowest opinion of us is a minus 80, and that's because it's the leader of a Lombard Revolt, and we've had reforms recently as well. Let's go for it. Let's go for High Crown Authority is the first thing we're doing. Again, with this character, I don't mind selling this guy's reputation, so our next character has an easier time of it. Because coming in as a, as a heresy of a different religion, it's an apostolic heresy, so it's not even a Catholic heresy. Um, this is going to be fairly difficult, I think. We can introduce him to the realm. Oh, shit. No, let's do that first. I forgot we could do that. Emperor Au Contraire is finally introduced. Young Au Contraire at the Kaiser at Court in Constantinople as part of his continuing efforts to groom the young man as his future heir. I hope he does well. Me too. Now, hopefully we'll... Well, in fact, I was going to say hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some stats from him. But if we do that, it means we owe favours to the people who educate him. And if it happens to be our courtiers, our vassals, you know, there's a high chance it could be people on our council. If we do that, obviously we owe them favours. So I'm going to fire a video. And it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, if we if we set these guys, because they like us too much anyway. We could always just demonically possess them, I guess. Does that make them loyalists on the council? I'm not sure. Let's possess them and find out. So we're going to demonically possess these two. That way I don't have to buy favors and I also don't have to fire them from the council. Um, that guy's been caught. In fact, this might give us a little bit of suspicion. We've been very careful with that so far. We haven't had any amounts of suspicion whatsoever. Okay. Oh, God. 62% chance against one diplomacy. We got it. Okay, that was very lucky. We can't really afford to lose much more diplomacy, especially when we're going to have such a turbulent realm in the, in the future. Nice. One dude was possessed. And as for the other guy, getting straight greedy. Not too bad. Could be a lot, lot worse. He's been infatuated with Rain Ender of Denmark. So the, the, the wife of the king of Denmark. Some, uh, some sturdy, fat, lustful woman. Just like, uh, just like his dad, au contraire. Nice, exactly his plan, right? So those two are now, I would assume, going to flip to loyalist, or not at all. Still malcontent. I feel like I've been, I feel like I've been lied to. Maybe if we just pass the law, they have to vote in our favour. Yeah, there we go. That's awesome. Okay, so we've only got by favours from um, accounts, 
We've got the Falkes D. Okay, Falkes D something something. So buy one from Othon and buy one from Falkes. And then that way, they're going to be the cheapest dudes as well because they're most likely the ones that are unlanded. Yes, Court Chaplain and our, our Constable there. Let's buy Favor. 80 gold. Done. Not like we can't afford it anyway, but I might as well save some gold where we can. Buy Favor from him because if we buy Favor from these guys, it's going to be like hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of gold. Yeah, 2,100. What about our Spy Master? Is he up for a Favor? 480. It's not worth it. They're already loyalists and we've already got enough things anyway. Right, chance of getting some stewardship. He lost some stewardship there. Ugh, that kind of sucks, I guess. It's not a big deal, but it does kind of suck. We're not close to our domain limit. The thing I worry about is our vassal limit. I don't know if that's actually affected by... Is that affected by stewardship? Surely it is. Um, oh, it's diplomacy that vassal limit affects. Okay, well, that's fine then. He should be alright with that one. Nice, there we go. Okay, let's call in that favour. So let's go calling council support. Nice. And let's call in council support on you as well. That should give us, I think, more than enough. These two are loyalists, or these two have to vote in our favour. These two are now indebted to us, so have to agree with our vote. These two are loyalists, so may, and he's a pragmatist, so it's also possible. What have we got? Five in favour, two undecided. And our vote as well. This is basically a guaranteed success. So that's uh, two voting in favour, and obviously us as well. The two people who owe us the vote, so they have to vote in our favour. Nice, we've done it. Maximum crown authority is massive. Now, what else can we do here? We can also set... No, I'm kind of happy for vassals to create their digital kingdoms. That's okay with me. Saves us a little bit of money. Obviously, we lose out the prestige. Speaking of which, another thing I did before I started the episode was I made sure to make all of the titles and usurp all the titles. I didn't want to do it during yesterday's episode because it's such a ball late to do that. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kingdom level titles, I believe, there. Still got two duchies and then obviously not enough baronies to quite get up to our limit. But, uh, yeah, no, that's pretty fun. Now, the best part is a lot of them are titular as well, so people don't really give a shit if we own them. In fact, I believe almost all of them are titular. Um, yeah, the Legion of Lombardy, like the Legion of San Genicio. I mean, I don't think those are anything to worry about. I don't, I don't think any vassals are going to be demanding it, let's put it that way. So, one thing we're also doing... Oh, we can get them Gregarious. That's huge. That's actually really good for diplomacy. Um, the other thing we were also doing in the background before we left things off was trying to kidnap the Khalifa, or the Caliph, of the uh, Seljuk Empire... Even though they've been sort of beaten around a little bit, they've actually lost a large chunk there of Persia. Um, they've lost some footholds up here towards the Tibetan Basin as well. And obviously this is broken off, Arabia is broken off, our vassals have actually been kicking their ass in the lower and northern points of Africa. Like I said, they've got the Nile Delta and they're in fact trying to get more, even more right now. So hopefully if they, if they can get as much as possible so that we can focus mostly on Anatolia and the Levant. That would be great if we never have to venture down here during that invasion. Because, you know, invasions get a little bit out of control when you're trying to get so much stuff. Right, Intrigue. He lost one Intrigue. Man, this has not been going good for us, huh? Him and Carl have become bitter rivals. Who is Carl? Should be some relation. Prince Carl of Aragon. Um, is he in line to the throne? He is. Well, that could be a problem. Um, yep, not anymore. No battle rivals with you. People are becoming suspicious. So after possessing two people and using powers to taint another, that is definitely an issue. We need to stop basically forever. Last thing we need to be branded apostate. There we go. He has been groomed to perfection questionable. He's an idolizer, timid, greedy young man and who's also stressed, but okay, fair enough. I've done my best to groom into a worthy heir. Vassal opinion plus four. Um, and basically, he'll get that for another 20 years. So if we die soon, which I think we will because we're 33 year old and we've had cancer and been a drunkard for a very long time, I don't think we need to worry about it. Now, the other thing I did notice, we've got magical corruption that gives us health. When that fades away, that seems to imply that we can't die while we've got this. It says, despite their apparent weakness, the dark forces keep them alive for nefarious re reasons. Oh my god. One, two, three, four gold. My favorite. If we were to die, then, or, or when that phase away, I think we are likely to die. And then obviously that kid keeps that bonus, you know, during his reign. Could pledge peace. 15 years. We're not going to live another 15 years. I'm sorry to say it. Have 10 children. Irrelevant. Win a holy war. Irrelevant. I think a lot of these are a little bit pointless. Um, we could change a province culture, which will restore one point of base stewardship and we'll gain an additional plus one stewardship. We also gain 100 prestige. So that, that this... It would generally only ever give you one stewardship, right? But if you've lost stewardship for whatever reason, then you can gain it back. See the round Prosper? Um, all round provinces receive a significant prosperity boost. Fuck it, let's go for it. Stay at peace for five years. Now, to my knowledge, how does this work? If he is attacked or goes to war. Yeah, I was going to say, if we get rebellions or religious uprisings, which is kind of likely given, you know, the state of Spain and Africa, then it cancels it, and then we just have to try again. It's just one of the sort of trial and error ambitions, unfortunately, so I'm not a big fan of that one. What else can we do in the meantime? I don't really want to just sit around waiting to die. I feel like there's something else I could be doing for the realm. But honestly, as far as things go, I mean, again, we don't want to seek treatment. Oh, we can search for a smith. Oh my god, absolutely. We can make ourselves a great set of armor or something like that. Okay, 
So we could... Why don't we try and make all of them, honestly? So as an Emperor, we have access to the Tier 4 sets of armor and weapons. Well, there we go. I guess that's... Has that already cancelled the ambition? Maybe revolts don't affect it? Oh, maybe apparently revolts don't affect it. Maybe it's just if a foreign ruler goes to war. And of course they go to war there. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Well, they've given us something to do. Where's our, where's our retinue, though? Uh, oh, it's right there. Okay, that's not too bad. Right, let's get some boats raised. And then, like I said, we'll go back to uh, the smithing aspect of things. So, as an emperor, we have access to the highest tier of uh, of smithing goods. You have to be an emperor. You have to also have 3,000 gold. You have to also have to get lucky. So, it's not 3,000 gold exactly. But with our monthly income, it, it definitely is. It's 2.5 times your monthly balance. Uh, caps at 2,000 gold, plus another 1,000 gold for the special supplies that upgrades grades it from level 3 to level 4, which is the only way you can actually get that. You just basically have to rely on the RNG a little bit. Nice. Carl of Aragon, our son's rival. Nothing shall stop his ascension. I'm ensuring that everything goes perfect for this kid. Right, we don't need any more boats after that, so I'll just ban the others when they, whenever they turn up. All right, let's put these boys on there. Getting the trait stressed. Anything to try and speed up his death is absolutely fine. He knows this place now. I think our boy is, is happy to sacrifice it. Why can't we... Am I going... Oh, apparently that's a different port. Are you kidding me? All oh, right, there we go. Apparently that's a... Yeah, it's a tiny little... Oh, right, I see. I see the issue. I thought it was a tiny little separate county there, but no, it's... The port's really close to Antioch for whatever reason. Right, get on there. Let's move over and... Oh. Or not. All oh, the vassals beat me to it again. Okay, good one. I should probably... Probably just wait for that. I should probably give my vassals like six months to actually react to that in the future, I guess. Anyway, I don't think it's it's cancelled our... Uh, our ambition, though, has it? I thought it did, but I guess not. Well, that's great news either way. Oh, shit. Those are our right news. Um, what do you want to put them? I guess just Constantinople, because we can raise a shit ton of boats from there. We don't have to worry about doing that again and moving boats over there. Right, put them back. Okay, so like I was saying, we do have some pretty good... We, we can't, literally cannot get a better crown. Um, we've got a Ruby Scepter, so I believe we actually can't... Oh, no, no, there's a Quality 3. What is it? Emerald Scepter? And then we can get a slightly better Dagger. It's only a Quality 2, and the best we can get is Quality 3 or Quality 4. Now, the greatest Crown is, is Quality 5, right? Crown of the Empire. That's way too good. And it also gives Temple Vassal Opinion plus 10, Diplomacy plus 4, so we wouldn't even want to switch that out, even if we even if we got something equivalent here. It's just it's just way too good. Nothing to place authority like fine jewelry. Right, so now we spend the 2,000 gold. Oh, is it kept at 2,000 gold? I've been saying 2,500 gold all this time. I was out by 500 gold, I apologize. Right, so it's kept at 2,000, you pay another 1,000 for the special resources. Again, it's all RNG. So we might just end up getting... That's the issue with having such a good treasury, right? Is we might just end up getting shit that's... Sort of the equivalent here of what we've already got. So a G is quality 3. It's going to be hard to beat that. Um, we also have this quality 3 armor. So we may just end up spending the 2,000 gold for an equivalent set of armor. We, we might just get unlucky with it. Or we get lucky we get our tier 4 and we get rid of this other crap. I'll pass it on to our son. So he starts building up prestige and things. That's a good idea, Brain. Duke Ansar, the Apostle, has formed an alliance with Roy Leopold the Careless. Good for him. I, speaking of Careless, I am I am there. Thank you. Gavassal Inheritance Warning. I'm not too bothered about that. Who's he... I mean, he's going to go to her. Why is that a problem? We've got him as well. I don't really care about anybody. A king is fairly significant, but no one else I really give a shit about. Um, they might pass from the old ram, but they won't, though. It's Agnatic Cognatic, I would assume. Yeah, so it's just going to go to his daughter. Thanks for letting me know, game. Appreciate you. It's because she might be married or betrothed, uh, not matrilineal, essentially, which is why the game is warning us. She might be married to someone outside of the realm. They'll have a kid, and then it'll inherit outside if it's under a different empire, but we don't have to worry about that. That's, that's really unlikely that would happen anyway. So we've got special negotiate with Suru. What? Oh, is that is that Raiders? Hang on. Negotiate with... Ah, Suru of Suru's host. He's got 104 dudes. You know what? He's actually quite good, though, isn't he? Adventure, you make a good vassal. The issue is I've given away all those duchy level titles that I usurped and created at the start of the episode to just the you know, random kings who can dish them out, just so we don't end up with higher vassal limit. Like I said, when this next kid takes over, right, we're going to struggle to get our vassal limit up to what we've got right now, because he's going to be pretty shitty. Yeah, we got unlucky, but fortunately for us, like I said, we haven't got any tier 3 jewelry already, so it is an upgrade, even though it's not a particularly fantastic one. Um, so Crown of Majesty tier 3, useless for us, as I said. The Emerald Scepter is better than the Ruby Scepter by a very tiny amount. And then the Sword of Heroes is better than the Bejeweled Dagger again by a very small amount. Between them, they do add up to a significant, uh, a, a measurable, I should say, value. So what we do is we chuck all the artifacts at our heir, who might be able to make some use of them. Um, and we'll just give the other crap away. So we'll give the Ruby Scepter to him. There you go. You can do something with that, my friend. We'll give him the Crown of Majesty, actually. You can wear that one, which I think is, is hopefully going to give him a decent amount. So give artifact. Um, can we even give him the Crown of Majesty? You know, I'm not sure you can in hindsight. Um, 
Oh, yes, you can. Good. Okay. Spinning one increase further, but again, I'm doing it for the prestige. So that he starts building up a decent amount, like, for any prestige, piety, that type of stuff. Not sure if we can equip half of this shit, but we can try it. So the lower tier one, so the crown of lilies, the rap, random crappy sets of the bejeweled dagger, all of that crap. I might just give it away to random courtiers so that we, it's not calling up our treasury. I don't know if there is any risk of losing artifacts on succession, but I sure as hell don't want to lose the bones of St. Peter or something like that. In fact, I think that's indestructible. We don't want to lose, like, Warden, for example, over keeping a crappy crown of pearls. So we give that stuff away. We will give him the Bejeweled Dagger, though. Right, so that's all of the jewelry I think I've sent him now. Let's open his treasury. There we go. So he's got Crown of Majesty. He's got Ruby Scepter. He's got Bejeweled Dagger. Nice. So now he needs a weapon of some description. So I assume we've got a spare one. Um, we've got the Breton Lance of the Cross. I think that's all we've got. We've got an engraved sword, but that's, again, another crappy one. I'm just going to throw at anyone to get it out of our treasury. Okay, so Breton Lance of the Cross. There you go. I like having a second set of artifacts for our heir. I think that's such a cool little system, because it also does kind of make sense as well that the heir in waiting would have, you know, something to uh, sort of show his post. You know, like, normally we have titular titles, like we would name him, what, like Caesar or something. In fact, I believe there is a titular title, isn't there? Um, yeah, the Rex Romanorum. So that is basically, you know, that. And I feel like he deserves some artifacts to go with his post. And then we've given him a weapon. We've given him his crown, his scepter, his dagger. I think we've got another spare pair of, pair of armor, haven't we? Pair of armor? A set of armor in here. Yeah, there we go. The splint mail armor. That's really bad, by the way. That's like really the lowest tier of armor. So this is crappy. Again, better than nothing. So the only thing, thing he's missing that he could equip is like a necklace. Or, um, which would only be the dragon amulet, to my knowledge, that we could get easily. Um... We got anything else at all that we've got doubles of that we want to throw at him? Oh, uh, give him some spare books, but you can even read books. Do you not have to be an adult to equip these? I need to double check. See if we can throw him books, it'll give up his give him bonus to learning. I mean, that's better than nothing, right? Because he's not going to have kids at the age of what, however old he is. Um, Namashans, even that would be better than nothing, right? Or C Confessions of Brother Labaget, Carlin Cookbook we've got as well. There's a couple of things we throw in. In fact, we've, we're missing an artifact equipped. So, okay, let's get this Magnum Opus equipped. I don't know why the hell we were didn't have those equipped. So we will throw away, like I said, the Golden Sword, the Collar of Pearls. I, I really don't want. In fact, we'll give those to, like, oh, give them to Wife, though. She'll just die immediately. Two, you know what? As third in line to the crown, <laughs> we're that rich. We've got enough artifacts to set up a third in line set as well. What about him? Um, he actually might be a good secondary heir, though. He actually genuinely, legitimately might be a good second heir. And you know what? We should be training off anyway. He's got a good guardian. Guy Carling is absolutely the best court educator we could hope for here, seeing as he's got diligent and patient. Those two traits on your guardian are basically asking for a high tier education. Right, let's throw him, uh, was it, it was two, wasn't it? And Guy Carling, there we go. You can have those. I trust him as well. He's my cousin. Who doesn't trust their di very, very, very distant cousin, Guy Carling, who I actually didn't even know existed? Right, and then, oh, no, not for you. So you want to give this kid also a second set of armor. I do like systems like this, you know, just having these weird little things that you sort of do for your dynasty. You, you sort of add to your own game. A bonus little set of jewelry. There you go. You can have that one too. Whenever it's ready. Oh, my wife Praxidia is pregnant again. Jesus. My guy's 34. She's 40, but he's also almost dead. I mean, there's that going for him as well. Now, we could also, you know, prolong our life force, but I want to get that invasion cast as well. I, and I think our guy knows that... You know, legally, he just can't do it. It's not a lot of scummy stuff, but that just will not be accepted by anyone. Um, oh, the Crown of Pearls is better than the Crown of Lilies. You know, I'll just give it to him. Honestly, my dude, just just take it all. Nice. Constantinople prospers. The prosperity of Constantinople has prompted, prompted an increased desire for a great library. Knowledge is power. This is huge. 1,300 gold for 25% bonus to spread rate. We've got an absurd amount of tech here in the capital. And to my knowledge, we still have, um, we still have the other one, don't we? They're not temporary in this one, thank God. What? Oh, no, they do expire. Oh, the levy room. No, 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 hang on. Well, no, no, that's, I'm looking at the wrong one. Regimental grounds. Yeah, no, they don't expire in this one. What mob was it we played before? It might have been when the world stopped making sense where they all expired, and I didn't notice I'm making a big deal out of it, and then they all disappeared after, like, a few years. That was not fun at all. Right, toot, my boy. Why do you need to wait this many... What the fuck was that? Did we just grab some land, then? Did we just grab a whole bunch of Anatolia? I have a feeling he just won that. He absolutely did. Religious reconquest. Oh my god, these vassals. They've got the whole of the Nile Delta. They cannot be stopped. We're not even going to need this invasion, Caspel. I think that the vassals are just going to basically set the kingdom for us. And this is how you know you're doing pretty well, I think. When your vassals are out, you can just, you know, be chucking around a bunch of artifacts to your descendants. Meanwhile, your vassals are putting your empire together for you, and they all love you as well. So, you know, they've got really no problem with it. Work harder, not smarter. Um, I'm going to make that duchy just for the prestige, and I'm going to give it to this dude, because he kind of deserves it. There you go, Mr. Wolf. He's a loyalist anyway. He's our possessed dude, so I really don't mind landing him with a bit more. Um, I assume it was that one. Right? Nikea? 
It's got to be that one. Uh, yeah, it is good. Okay. Fantastic. What was I doing? Throwing artifacts away so I don't have to look into this. And this is going to save us so much time in the future as well because it means I don't have to go through every fucking artifact in the treasury. I have an engraved sword. Boom. That's that nice and tidied. Again, I, I don't think there is any artifact loss on succession in this because certain mods disable it because it's crappy when you collect all these artifacts and then lose them. Some artifacts are also indestructible, but there is a chance we can lose things like, you know, Saint's Fingerbone. I believe Holy Preppers as well. Um, you yeah, know, that type of crap. Right. Are we dead yet? We're not visiting that brothel again. We just lost 200 gold in a brothel. You madman. How do you even manage that? Still got these Carlin. These Carlin commanders are nuts. I think, honestly, think. Part of me thinks that without those, speaking of which, without those, we'd have really suffered this campaign. Because we've been able to lead military campaigns that have been really risky, right? Just, just having less troops, crappy troops as well, light infantry, whatever. Just going and really not caring about that type of stuff. But the commanders have pulled us through it. And obviously, we've had some great commanders that we personally played as as well. So this is, um, I don't know. I feel almost like it's been a little bit too good for the campaign. And someone pointed out, I asked last episode as well, like, how the hell are we doing this well? One of you pointed out that actually, you know, the artifacts are fairly easy to get with this with this mod pack. And without a lot of these artifacts. Although it's not too difficult to get, though, is it? Now that, I mean, personally, I've played as Vikings since Holy Fury has come out. Gone around and just raided as part of one of the warrior societies. You know, you get bonuses to raiding from being, like, level 2, whatever. The Reaver, I believe, in the warrior societies. Literally just getting that, going to every Catholic site, you know, besides the Ark of the Covenant, that's always difficult to get to because obviously you can't get boats down to, you know, the southern parts of Africa here. But going to, like, the, you get Grab and the Bone, St. Peter, Siege in Constantinople, taking all of their artifacts, doing that repeatedly, and then getting to a certain age and just flipping to Catholic, you've got this equivalent. You know, you'll you'll have all of this other crap as well, Crown of Thorns, Saints, Seamless Rose of Jesus, all of that. You can just get yourself. It's very, very easy to get these, and I, I kind of do like... As kind of OP as it is, I do kind of like the uh, steel artifact mechanic because there are very few ways to get the artifact you want as as Catholic. And, you know, clearly in history there have been a lot of thefts of, of very, very holy artifacts. So I feel like we're just, you know, we're just sticking to the historical merchant aspect of things. Aldermode Carling. Terrible name. Um, right, what have we got? <laughs> we, no, please don't tell me we've, we haven't got a bourgeoisie, have we? Nope. We've got a Crowth Chilidis, which I thought was so funny we left it. We've got Au Contraire the First, two... Non, La Baguette, Cigarette, and Bourgeoisie. These are absolutely the highlight names of the series, aren't they? These are the 10 out of 10 names that we've come up with this time around. I, I, I'm a big fan of all of them. How's he doing? Let's go for a checkup. He's 14 years of age. Two more years, and we can actually finally see if uh, if he's going to be any good. We can also make the, what? Duchy of La Mancha? Did we not always have that? I hope they conquest Leon as well, because that would really make our borders look kind of nice. Plus, it's part of the Imperial Reconquest for the Roman Empire at its full extent. So this also counts towards that. So if they want to grab that too. Speaking of which, what are the other... Are we have to see the other provinces for that. So this is the I Imperial Reconquest Tier 4. So this would be probably the first one we go for after we've... Um, oh my god, we've got almost all of it besides Leon and this random holdout zone from the uh, from Al Andalus. So we've got almost everything there. So that's great. Then I assume the UK and sort of northern... Um, France and, and the UK and sort of the northern regions. So that is... Imperial Conquest Tier 5 is just France. We've obviously got all of that but Normandy. And I imagine England has got to be in Tier 6 then, right? Yeah. England, Wales and Germany. That's got to be the end of it. Because they didn't expand beyond that. In fact, they've expanded too far anyway. Because Hadrian's Wall is what, like... Hadrian's Wall is normally along here. So... That's got to be the end of it. In fact, we've almost got the entirety... Oh, you know what? We've got to get these few provinces here and all the way around into sort of like Armenia, down past Georgia, down... Okay, so we've got to go kind of right down here as well. What's this, like Iraq? Honestly, I don't want to commit to it, but I think the possibility of making the full extent Roman Empire is so close as well. England lay on and grabbing this sort of area around the Black Sea, and that's it. Like, we've just naturally expanded. Like I said, with all the vassals doing the dirty work for us, this made this campaign super, super easy. Right, um, oh right, here we go, okay. This is where boys become men, and men become boys, and boys most likely also kill men as well, because he's going to become a rival. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, there we go. 25% chance of becoming better rivals. It's kind of like CK2+, Plus, where you're not always guaranteed to become rivals. I really hate that feature in the base game. 71%, you can do it. Oh. And honestly, with that, he's not too bad. 16, 15, 14, 16, 16. That's a pretty well-rounded character. He's n he doesn't hold a candle to Au Contraire the Fourth or Au Contraire the Third or you know what? He's sort of online with uh, Emperor Au Contraire the Second, so he's actually not doing too bad. Uh, into the dungeon with him. Oh, because he fucked up the treatment of my wife. I don't care. He's trying his best. I re I really don't mind if she dies at this point. You know, we're sort of expecting to drop down dead anytime soon. Stressed. You know what we could do? 
business focus and try and get depressed as well. That's probably not a bad idea in hindsight. Because that way if we get depressed, you know, we can just we can just kill them off anyway. But we've already got stress, we've already got cancer, we're, we're drunken as well. The Satan Society modifier that was keeping us alive is also gone. Honestly, I'm surprised this dude has lived as long as he's lived. This is, this is, a, I was kind of hoping he would have dropped down dead sort of five minutes into this episode. Right, what else have we got in terms of the advisor panel? Um, there we go, and that's everybody back again to loving us. Oh my god, we've actually got more tech. Now what do we need in the capital? Let's take a look. Um, so town infrastructure level 7, trade practices level 7, popular customs level 7. Trade practices level 7, we can get. Popular customs, we are actually not too far away. 800 tech points off of being able to get that one as well. And then what else do we need? Town infrastructure level 7, popular customs level 7. We're town infrastructure level 7, we're going to be... We're only 1,000 points off of that one. We're 1,200 points off of that one as well. We're definitely going to be able to have a fully upgraded Flogies Tech Mod HIP province. Which is quite an achievement by itself. I've only ever done it in Mad World, but Mad World was... Let's, let's forget about that one to, to some extent. That wasn't exactly the most balanced experience, was it? This isn't either. Imper lower Imperial Decay. Minus 2. We're down to 45. So he's going to succeed. He's going to plus 11 again. I don't think we've made much progress on the Imperial Decay, I will admit. I feel like we could have... Oh, special tie. Thank you. Right on cue. Let's try and make the tier 4 set of armor. Plus, we can throw the, the armor at our son as well. Um, even if we only get the tier 3, because we've got tier 3 anyway. So we can throw the spare set at him and help build up his Peasant Revolt. <laughs> build up his peasant revolt. Uh, where, where are they? Where are they this time? I can't actually. Oh, is this some? Nope. Raiders. Why the fuck is this? Antsburg, Germany. My God, the traitors. Um, I'm sure we've got uh, these rams have got to be strong enough now just to be able to raise enough troops to take these out, right? We will go to all of our local kings and just sort of uh, borrow their troops. And again, they might do it for them, for like automatically for themselves. But oh my God, he had 23,000 men in Lombardy. When all else fails, you can rely on Lombardy. Um. Let's at least go, you know what, your troops might as well stand, in fact, your troops might as well stand on as well, because they're just going to get annihilated, let's be honest. Let's put our best commanders on this one, just so it, you know, goes a little smoothly, we don't lose too many men to attrition, that type of thing. Right, there we go. Alright, where is my smith? I want some tier 4 armor, for God's sake. That'd be a nice long-term investment as well. Oh. Frail. Health minus 0 0.5. Oh, he's dead. How is he alive? So stress gives minus one, so that's... Uh, so let's assume he's got base five health. Base, base five health is what most characters always have, right? Minus one from stressed, taking him down to four. Minus 0 0.5 from drunken, so he's at 3.5. Cancer knocks off a three, so now he is at 0 0.5 health. And now he's also frail, knocking off the final 0 0.5 health, taking him down to zero. He's got zero health, so his chance of dying now is exceedingly high. Is he almost ready? Can he survive another... Can he live another few months, maybe? Because he is still the guardian, don't forget. A fine idea, Constable Guilliman. Thank you. Our Constable is going to bring in a Weaponsmith. Uh, no, Armorsmith. Armorsmith, of course. Right, thank you very much. Uh, good. Right, that's Revolt ended. Get out. Put this one down. It's a real shame. The one thing I would love to see added in future patches, don't tell me about Saints unless they're related to you, because I really do not give a shit, for the most part, about if some random gouty man in England become a Saint. I, I honestly don't care about that. I would go into battle, but with anything but the very best. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, we've got the thousand... We've definitely got the thousand gold necessary. You do... Shit. Well, I was kind of hoping we'd be able to get the armor that we paid for before this happened. Okay, keep it paused. What did our... Plus 10. Okay, that's not too bad. I think we can definitely get that down. So, it was plus 11 last time. Now, it's plus 10. That's okay. Maybe it also is reflected by how much you start with. Well, this is it. This could be the start of the final. Does not have a regent. Piety. What? Seriously? That's all it takes to become the Paulician Paulician Patriarch. My god, the Paulician Paulician Patriarch. What a great title. Um, does not have a regent. Piety. We need a thousand piety, which we'll get in absolutely no time at all, I guarantee. Let's get our artifacts set up before we do anything else. So equip that one. Um, your contrary, I'd give some martial diplomacy. Let's equip all the learning based books to start off with in the hopes that maybe we could... Get a magnum opus? No, we still don't have enough because we're that stupid. Uh, what else has he got equipped here? White stag, get rid of that. Right, equip the confessions first because that will give us the learning. Okay, so it's learning plus two, learning plus two. Please, come on, surely we can just scum this up a little bit. Right, we don't want this one. And we don't want this one because we've got much better books. Um, we've got the Emerald Scepter equipped. We don't have the Rights Crown, so the Crown of Majesty is a close second. Got, we should always start with our best stuff equipped. Um, we haven't got a weapon. We can't equip weapons because we're not an adult yet. Okay, fair enough. We kept everything, didn't we? Certainly looks like we've kept everything anyway. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to equip two more books. Um, go for Apicus for the stewardship. And I guess we'll go for the Au Contrariad for the diplomacy. Um, yeah, right. Done. 
Okay, fantastic. Now we are over our vassal limit. I was kind of dreading this a little bit, but we haven't been we haven't we haven't turned of age yet, so that's also something to uh, it's also something to bear in mind. We can change our education at the last minute. Oh my god. Equal chance of becoming a good steward, a good intrigue, or good diplomat. I almost feel like diplomacy is essential if we're a different religion, because I imagine our vassals aren't a big fan. Uh, yeah, it's it's certainly down there a little bit. You know what? We're flipping to diplomacy at the last minute. This is uh, a little bit scummy, but kind of works, huh? Right, so we want Guy to be our educator. He already is, but I want to make sure he's our educator and not just our guardian, because uh, sometimes that can affect it. He's diligent and patient, which increases the percentage chance of us becoming a good diplomat quite significantly. Now, we are a prodigy. I don't think it counts as genius. So, we won't worry about the extra percentage you get from that as well. Pledge Peace to our vassal 15 is not going to happen. It's not happening. Right, okay. Um, we can also set some titles, which we weren't able to grab before for whatever reason. I don't know why we can do that now. So, let's set Constantinople as our capital. Does it mean we've got to grab Rome now? Is this what I'm hearing? Because I imagine it said what? It's our holy site of... It's holy site of Politian. Okay. Um, let's take a look. What have we got? Um, is that one? It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I don't think it is, but we can... Oh my, what is going on here? Uh, well, th there was definitely one... Oh, this is so difficult to tell what's happening. Right, we click ourselves. Does that not normally show our holy sites on the map? We could also just go religion, I guess. Okay, Alexandria, Rome, or Antioch. Easy. We... Do we not... Wait, we don't, we don't have Antioch? I thought we had Antioch. Oh, no, we don't have Antioch. Um, we just grab Rome in that case. We grab Rome for the Pope, make, make it our capital in the process. That might be quite good. Although I think it's mostly temples at this stage, isn't it? Hmm. All right, let's get the last few things set up. This is going to be... The next episode is going to be popping off. Next episode is seriously, seriously going to be popping off. Um, I'm happy to leave that there. I think we need to do it. We don't need to pick an ambition. We don't need to get married yet. We'll wait until we come of age first so that people like us more, so that we're an adult. We can get our artifacts equipped. We can get an education, which in turn might give us access to better wives. You know, people might be more receptive to us. Council position, we can't let to chaplain, so we're going to have to hire one. We might as well hire one quickly, I guess. Um, but holy man, welcome aboard. Jasput, do whatever your name is. Leaven, oh man, are we going to start proselytizing immediately? Let's try and make the capital. Let's try and make the capital pollution just to kick things off here. Um... Fantastic. Alright, thank you all for watching. Let's leave it there. Next episode is going to be massive. This is where we can do everything. We can form Rome. We can become a religious head. We can have an imperial coronation. We can declare emancipation. We can do so much stuff. I think this is going to be, it's going to be pretty hefty, huh? Let's give a shout out to our hefty boys and girls, perhaps. Harik, Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Sedini, Croesus, Conspired C, Escape, Pukunda Vasquez, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Jake, uh, hang on, Loras, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Tom Terry 18, Vacuous Backers, Wolfson, Zazzy 7011. That's never going to stop being difficult. Reading a list of names three times a day, sometimes more than that, for a month, and then flip into an entirely separate list in a different order is honestly it's mind-boggling and it's something i hope none of you ever have to experience because every time i read it i feel like my i've completely forgotten how to read words thank you to all of those aforementioned people for their support thank you in the channel live hope you guys are enjoying this series we are on to our final most likely two episodes i'm calling it i think we're up to our final two episodes here as well and a big shout out as well to Gray, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Luan Thomas, Arakira, Asaro, Betamus Max, Chris, Crazy Pat, Don, Don Comey 2 and 7, Gabriel Vanders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Haji Dumar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Joran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Nathan Flores, Nick, Panther Pearl, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Surfable Thor the Swede, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sedini, Fraser Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and The Insane Pickle. Thank you all for your support as well.